I can't believe that this is day five of this uh, series of interviews with Dean Merrill, who has edited and updated the uh, best-selling devotional of 1936, with over a million copies sold, Victorious Living by E. Stanley Jones. Beautifully bound. It looks like it came right off the shelf in 1936, <laughs> Dean. It's a beautiful idea. Um, he was nominated for a Nobel Prize. Now, let, let's get this in context. This guy's a missionary. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's, he's an American from Baltimore. He spent most of his life in India. He's mm -hmm. a friend of Mahatma Gandhi and Nehru, and, and he's visited with uh, uh, Roosevelt several mm -hmm. times, almost averted um, Pearl Harbor. Uh, but for what was he nominated for a Nobel Prize? Uh, his intervention to try to prevent war in the Pacific. Oh, really? Yes. yes. Uh, that came up, was finally noticed, 1962 he was nominated. He did not win the prize, but he was nominated for it. He won something called the Gandhi Peace Prize the very next year to try to prevent the horrible suffering and death and carnage of World War II in the Pacific. Now, this man wrote, was it 28 books? 28. 28 books. He did 10 uh, devotional series. 10 of them are like this. 10 of them are like this. 18 others. Yeah. 18 others. He spoke over 60,000 times, which boggles the mind. Mm -hmm. As a public speaker myself, I just, uh, it's amazing. How did he maintain a marriage? I mean, uh, <laughs> did he ever see his wife? Yes, they did. Yeah. The, they did. He, he married another missionary, uh, mm -hmm. a, a woman who was a few years older than he. She was very involved in education of children and schools, and so uh, they would, uh, you know, they both were deeply involved in mission work and they shared a life together. They had one daughter. That daughter is still living today. She is well into her 90s. Um, and so, but, you know, th there was a lot of separation back and forth. I'm sure there must have been. Yeah. And, and by the time of about the 1950s, he decided, okay, I will spend six months of the year in India, six months in North America, six months one place, six months the other, to sort of make this a little more tolerable. Right. But we, but we never stop, never retired. No, 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 no. no. And, and, and we saw we saw a little segment uh, from him speaking uh, a day or so ago where he talked about uh, living a full life right into his 70s and 80s. Um, there was one other thing here I wanted to ask you about if I can find it. If I don't, then I won't. But um, oh yeah, here it is. I mentioned these rules of um, um, getting along with one another. Mm -hmm. he, he does a whole series here uh, that he starts out by talking of as something part of something bigger. And frankly, when I was reading this, I thought of um, Dietrich Bonhoeffer's book, Life Together. Mm -hmm. There's some real parallels uh, between the advice he gives, Bonhoeffer does, and, and what uh, E. Stanley Jones, uh, uh, Jones gives. But his 14th point, and I think it's his last point, yeah, it is, keep up the prayer life. Mm. Now, um, does he write about prayer anywhere? Oh, yes, yeah. Uh, what, and and yeah. we've only got a minute. What, what does he say about prayer? He says, uh, I, I love the one on uh, one day where he talks about what prayer is not. Yeah. Prayer is not bending God to get him to do what we want. Right. Prayer is an activity that bends us toward God. He said when you, when you cast a, a hook to bring a boat in and you hook onto something on the shore and you start pulling, you don't pull the shore to the boat. No, you pull, but the boat moves toward the shore. That's what prayer is. Prayer is getting our boat toward the shore of God's will and God's plan and purposes. It's not getting the shore to move. That, that's not the way it works. Yeah. These kinds of insights keep coming out all the time, and particularly in regard to prayer. Yeah. In fact, uh, when he uses illustrations like that one, uh, and he uses several in this devotional, it reminds me a lot of um, C.S. Lewis, because C.S. Lewis uh, often mm. would kind of blindside you with the simplicity of his illustrations. Yes. But uh, that illustration of prayer, it's just, it just, uh, I mean, it makes sense. Did I get you read it. the one about uh, uh, the man carrying the tin on his roof? Yes. <laughs> it's um, uh, about hearing God's yeah. voice. Yeah. And he said, I just looked down and there was a workman carrying corrugated tin on his roof, which like the roofs are in yeah. India. Yeah. And uh, I, I called to him and he didn't hear, he didn't hear. And every, somebody else yelled at him, he didn't hear and didn't hear. Why? Because the tin is making so much noise, bouncing as he's walking it up this construction site. God is talking to you. God is talking to us. Can you hear him or is there too much tin rattling on, right above your ears? Too much tin on your head. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
I mean, it's just it's so, I'm, I'm not surprised it became a bestseller. And here it is for you, friends. It's called Victorious Living, E. Stanley Jones, edited and updated by my guest, Dean Merrill. It's a beautiful, beautiful book, and it's available to you. Limited quantities, just this week. This is the last day for you to get it, and I know you're going to love it. So, write us at Post Office Box 5100 in Burlington, Ontario, L7R4M2, or Post Office Box 486, Niagara Falls, New York. 14302 or crossroads.ca is our internet address. Whatever way you choose, you better do it now. And remember, your ministry gift to Crossroads is so critical, so appreciated. And uh, it's been five quick days. Uh, Dean, thanks for coming our way. Thanks for asking.